How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf. And uh, today I was going to review that other like the other Tatra in the, this Tatra pack. But uh, yeah, there was a few people who weren't too keen on the review yesterday. I, I'd say overall majority was uh, fine. But yeah, there's a few people that basically think I weren't very fair to the truck. Uh, they reckon these tyres that I've got on it now uh, are like custom muds. They're basically the same tyres as like what are on the Zix. Um, yeah. And then, so I just thought I'd make a video tonight, kind of address a couple of those things. Generally, just talk about the truck, the video. Uh, I've also gone and got some footage of various different bits of the review. It's not going to be like all the footage, if you know what I mean, but every bit where I think the tyres could have played a part, I've kind of gone and tested it out, etc. Um, yeah, so like I said, I was just going to kind of address a couple of things with this. Like, some people, for example, said I wasn't very fair to the truck, uh, I made it look bad. My response to that is, I don't make it look good or bad, like it either performs good or it performs badly, but I do kind of find that interesting though, because they seem to have the opinion that it's a very good truck, which I said throughout the whole review, pretty much it's a pretty good truck and it did well on near enough every single test. Um, but I find it quite interesting that they think it's a good truck, but when they watch my review, they obviously get a bad vibe from it because they said I made it look bad where like I said I squeeze the throttle and I turn an analogue stick like if the truck performs it performs if it doesn't it doesn't um, but yeah that was kind of that's almost like their opinion that it did badly and they're kind of trying to blame me for that but that's how they've perceived the uh, the review that's not how I presented the review like the truck is clearly a very good truck and because of that there's a high bar to be set, it's also one of the most expensive trucks in the game. Um, yeah, so I'm not expecting it to, you know, do a little bit better than a Brigadier or a Cat CT681 and I'm happy. It's like, I want it to be competing against the big stuff like Bruce, Dolphin, John, uh, the Zix, the Bandit, that all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so to go over a few things as well, like the reason I used the chained in the video in the end. I've kind of mentioned this quite a lot throughout various videos. The whole discussion with chain versus muds and all the rest of it has kind of been the longest, most consistent thing that people have mentioned just throughout like the last year and stuff. And yeah, before I started the, like getting the footage for the review video yesterday, I went and tested both tyres out because I prefer the chain, but obviously when I looked through it had two sets of muds, normally stuff like I believe the Dolphin and that has one set of muds and Dan and so on. Um, yeah, and I could see they were the same tread pattern as the, uh, the Zix, even though when you go through them, like the normal muds say something like good, excellent, excellent, and I think the custom ones say like poor, good and excellent or something, so they look worse as far as the stacks go, but yeah, I thought, oh, they look like custom muds as in on the Zix. I drove both of them round, I didn't feel any particular discernible difference um, as far as chain go, like overall, a lot of people go off the stats. I believe the stats are incorrect as far as the chained go. Like when you've got the particularly the mud version of the chained, I believe their mud stats are muds then with bonuses because they've got chains on, not the stats that the stats say with chained, which is like sort of a noticeable difference, like a noticeable amount lower than the muds. Um, yeah, so. I already, like, from doing various reviews of all the different tyres, like, I've spent, you know, hundreds of hours literally doing reviews and all the rest of it, specifically focusing on tyres and all sorts. Um, I went with the Chained for multiple reasons. One, with all the other reviews, if I've got access to Chained, I'll put Chained on, because then it's, like, it's one less var variable between the different truck reviews. It might have different tyres, and that's you guys like your guys choice to go and put whatever tires and whatever setup you like but I try and make them pretty even with the stuff they've got and then yeah you can kind of it's a better measure of it against another truck um also like I do think generally the chained muds particularly are kind of underrated um you'll see various examples tonight of like fours and against of both of them uh yeah so that's basically what I'm going to do tonight, just revisit a load of places like that. Like I personally would choose the uh, Chained on this anyway, because long story short, if you put the custom muds on, I'd rather take the Zix, because the Zix is the same truck, all-wheel drive, only it's got diffs always on, etc. 
it's got bigger mud tyres, it's got more weight to it, so it plants itself into the ground better. So, to me, this is an inferior version of the Zix, if, it, if I put the chained, uh, if I put the custom muds on, sorry. But anyway, this is uh, the first one going through this bit in uh, Northport. Goes through there at the same speed as the chain did. Um, yeah, they're both the same through there, they're both good. So, uh, as far as, like, that goes, there's not any... Uh, difference and I know there will be areas that there will be differences which is good but we'll get onto them um yeah going down here I knock one tree over it's still got enough grip to knock one tree over I don't believe I even saved the footage but I tried it as well where I actually hit or went to hit all three trees and I broke one and then got stopped on the second one uh, round here in general it's not really so much the tires either way it's more, if anything, the gearbox, like, it's a little bit slow here compared to some other trucks, but trucks that are in, like, the high-range gearbox can kind of punch their way through more of that slow bit just with the extra moment momentum they have, so... In that sense, like, every truck that's got advanced special and all that just loses, naturally, momentum because it's a slower set of gearboxes. Whereas, yeah, like, the ultimate one is probably, like, the twin steer kind of uses its speed to punch through a lot of rough terrain and by the time it's been slowed down it's already 50 foot into it and um, this is an example though there's with the uh, custom muds it can't even knock that one tree over with a chain on I could knock the first tree over because as I've said before I believe the chains bite into mud better so once I start hitting that tree the chains bite better and dig in and um, there I don't know if this is what it is or not but I just hit that barrier with the custom muds on and I took damage I've now hit six barriers with this truck, five of them have been when I've had the chained on, one with the muds, and the only time it took damage was the muds, so I just wanted to leave that in. I'm not necessarily saying that's the case, but I, I found that to be the case, and yeah, if it was the opposite way around, I would have left it in just the same. Uh, going through here, it doesn't make any difference really whether you've got like chain door muds on this thing isn't heavy enough this is where its lack of weight is probably hindering it more than anything uh, someone was saying as well I found it quite funny that I don't know how to handle the gearboxes or something like I don't think they understand the outer mechanics that kind of affect the end result of your speed like as I'm going into high low and medium low overall I get a more of a benefit out of high low because even though it does bleed a bit of wheel spin, they both go the same speed whether you're in high, low, medium, low, chained or custom muds. But every now and then, if there is more grip to be had, I will get the benefit if I'm in high, low, because there's some wheel spin to spare. In medium, low, it's kind of set to that speed regardless. You'll see when I'm just climbing out of here now, uh, I'll get like a little speed boost when I'm in high, low. And if I drop to medium, low, it slows down. So that's where overall... I would get over this river quicker than them. So yeah, I do understand the uh, the gearbox mechanics. Like I said, I don't think you're factoring in a lot of like other things that give you the end result of that. Um, climbing over this barrier, pretty good still, but a tiny bit worse than the chain because they like had a little bit of slip. It started making me shift over to the right a little bit. And then this second, like the higher barrier test, get the first two tyres over, but then I sort of beach on the fuel tanks. And this is where with the chained they would bite into the uh, the icy tarmac road there and like get me all the way over like it did in the uh, the video yesterday. So yeah, already that's like sort of a negative for the uh, the custom muds. Going up here, climbing up this rock, the back end steps out, whereas the chained bite onto this kind of rock better. Um, that gave me a bad angle when I was dropping off the rock and I rolled. So, yeah, that's another little thing that's like a negative price you pay having the muds overchained. Um, this is, say, for example, another one, obviously, you're going down icy roads and that back end just stepped out and I clipped the barrier. Nothing crazy, but if I had a ramped flatbed now trying to reverse and that, that thing starts to try to tip and all sorts. Um, so, this is custom muds doing the wall jump, and as you can see, I got my nose up, got the first axle over. The second axle has can't bite onto the lip of the wall and lift itself over and the rear wheels that are on like the icy yard hasn't got enough grip to kind of push me up and over so the first time I did it was like a bit of a run up this is now just kind of going slow and crawling up the pipes same result though once I get to the second axle I can't bite my way up the wall so get that out of the way this is a identical truck kitted out identical in every way except this has got the chains on 
as you can see, once the second axle gets to the wall, the chain's biting enough. Between the second axle biting on the top of the wall and the rear axle that's got more grip on the icy yard, it had enough oomph to like bump itself over the wall and yeah, I got over. It was just catching its nose, but one thing I did, I had a flat tyre, so I think that probably didn't help, but just give it a little bump again. Uh, again, got the second axle over. I believe now it's this tree just to my left where like the branches are holding me still. I'll sort of show you now that I do it again. I just stay a little bit further away from that tree. But again, third time out of three, the uh, second axle sort of bites in enough, jumps over the wall. And I'm over there. And that just, it's kind of the same thing for rocks, rocky ledges. And in that, I appreciate that wall in particular is kind of a rare situation, but... It's kind of a stand-in for lips, like rock lips, rock edges, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, going through here, basically identical. Um, obviously, it is partly the truck's fault that I'm forced to have this trailer. It would be better with a sideboard semi-trailer here, but it is what it is. It's the truck that's made me do that. But yeah, same situation. Got the legs hooked into like that brow of the hill. Stuck a winch to, there's a, like a dead tree there, to sort of pull, just get the legs over the, that uh, brow of the hill. After that... It's crawling, you know, a bit slow, but once it, I sort of unbeach the trailer. Um, yeah, like I said, I would say basically the same as yesterday with the chained. I'm in low range, high low, and that's about the speed I can travel in high low. So about equal there. So so far, I think we've had three or four negatives, and no positives yet so far. And again, I'm not hating on like, I'm, it's cool that it's got custom muds and the chained. Um, yeah, going around there, I mean, a bit. it hasn't got the best turning circle. As I've mentioned before, I kind of went wide enough where I nearly hit that first blue trailer, which is kind of a good measure of a not so good turning circle versus a better one. Uh, it goes quite slow through those deep water patches. This is shallow water, and now we'll hit what seems to be considered deep water again. Stuff like the dolphin and that would plough through here in high range a lot quicker. This ended up getting slowed down to the point where I put it in high and it didn't lose or gain any speed, it just... But yeah, overall it's a slower set of gearboxes. And it was slowed down a bit by the water, which I believe to a degree is just lack of weight again. The more weight it has, the more it plants itself into the terrain under the water and pull itself along. Going through here, uh, custom muds again on this. I actually played this at the same time as I watched my video on YouTube. Uh, the chain got through here only a couple of seconds. But they got through there a couple of seconds quicker than the custom muds. So, yeah. Again, like, that's what I found with that cargo container contest delivery thing on Drown Lands. The chain bit into the sloppy mud better and quicker, and that was the same result there. Um, here, going through the snow, identical as yesterday, really. I start tapping L1 at some point to try and get it to jump up to second. It won't at first. It will about now, because there is a little patch here of, like, what isn't super snow anymore. I can get into high gear and all that with the dolphin, etc. there. And then I'll hit another patch of slower snow about now. And you'll see again, I'm tapping L1. You can kind of see the little ring appearing on the gearbox. Yeah, it's not jumping up to second, so that was the same as yesterday, so no better, no worse. Uh, the death mud section, I, to be honest, had a feeling that the muds would do better here. Was, this was like kind of my gut feeling approach in this. This is one of the areas you would expect that sacrifice with all the other negatives like to be sort of a gain. So going through this section, pretty slow again, like, but it's still travelling forward, I'm just saying, yeah, there is uh, stuff that's gone a little bit faster, uh, but low range, diffs on, high low, whatever, we're crawling along forward. I cut a forward there about probably a minute or so, uh, long story short, I got to about the same spot. Like, I was crawling about this slow yesterday with a chain, and I got to around here, and it stopped. And I know it was about the same place, because that tree was roughly, like, yeah, to, like, to the left of the nose of my truck. And, yeah, I got stuck, and I had to, like, winch over to the tree, which is exactly what I did yesterday. So, no better, no worse, which I was surprised at that. I thought the custom muds would have actually been a bit of advantage there. Doing the roll test here, I'm not really blaming the tyres for it, but I just happened to not land on my wheels that time. But I don't think that's because of, like, the custom muds versus the uh, chain run. 
Um, yeah, and then lastly, this is the hill where yesterday, with a chain, I climbed all the way up. The other week, the Zix couldn't get up here because it's got the custom muds. And this is uh, sort of an example just to show you, like, this has now got the custom muds on. And it stops at this point, whereas yesterday, I even drove in the identical tracks that you could see. I don't know why the top half of the mountain tracks are missing, but, yeah, the chain drove straight up there yesterday. This is one thing that's a little bit meh with the truck, because it's not got enough weight at the front, really. Its front was lifting a bit there, and then it rolled. And to its credit, it is pretty bloody good at getting back to its wheels. Like, that time I just rolled on my roof a minute ago was, I believe, the only time I've not landed on my wheels, except when I jumped off the White Valley cliff. Um, so, yeah, overall, I mean, I lost out a bit climbing up that snowy mountain, but that's about it. Uh, back to the quarry. Again, this has got the custom muds on. Still needed, in the end, to fling a winch to the loaf just to tighten my corner up. So, no better, no worse uh, from that little bit. Like, it still understeered a little bit. Uh, got to the identical place as it did yesterday with the chained. I was just trying now to disconnect the trailer and I'll be honest I, I suppose maybe I'll come back at some point and test it a little further but you seen yesterday once I disconnected the trailer I was able to pull it up the hill from here whereas I can't now and you'll see soon why I find that kind of surprising but I honestly thought I would be able to yeah I did it yesterday it was on the video it's in the review like I pulled the trailer up by disconnecting it and sort of getting to a little bit of a better spot and then sticking a winch on it. Long story short, I was going to winch myself up with a loaf and then I was like, I'll just try this, unpack the cargo, which lightens the weight. And uh, yeah, long story short, I mean, it's driving up, so it kind of shows you that I, I appreciate the trailer's a bit of a tosser and when there's weight on it, it sits a bit lower, but the main issue there was like the amount of weight on the trailer and this truck because it's not as heavy as the Zix, for example. It's not planting itself in as hard into the terrain, so it's not biting in as well, I would sort of say. But I believe that's pretty much uh, the same results there between the chained and the uh, custom muds. Like, the loaf could have got this up, and yeah, I believe I ended up unpacking the cargo yesterday to try that out, and that helped with the chained as well. Uh, yeah, so now for the uh, third quarry hill. And at the minute, by the way, gut feeling, I thought, yeah, it's not going to get up here because uh, the first two quarry hills, it just didn't get up. It couldn't even pull that trailer up uh, once I'd winched to it. However, I've already got higher than I did yesterday. I believe probably about half a truck length now, the chained only got about that high sort of its nose was probably near to that rock uh yeah good news it's climbing higher it stops for a little bit there's a glitch there as well but it basically kept stopping for say five seconds and then it like you, you can see now there's a little bit there and then it'll like have a little burst where it'll sort of jump another i don't know tires length and then it'll sort of stop a bit again but jiggling the steering left and right and all the rest of it i was able to get up there without uh, sticking a winch on the loaf, which, well, is definitely good. Uh, there's not that many vehicles. Funny enough, though, I think this is one of the only vehicles that's made it up the third quarry hill but couldn't get up the first or second. I think everything else that can get up the third, like Bruce, I believe Bruce still has the record on this quarry situation. He literally just walked the first, second and third like it was nothing so it didn't even start to wheel spin or sweat or anything which I think that has a benefit because it's got 10 tyres it just has more grip but my issue with this truck in the quarry test yesterday wasn't this uh, sorry wasn't the hill because I kind of expected it not to get up the third quarry hill and I was fine with that it was able to stick a winch on the loaf and get up it's like look the trailer is heavier than my truck so the trailer is dictating when I reverse it's trying to jackknife my truck not move the trailer and because of its bad turning circle I had this yesterday and again this is like I got the identical results today like this it doesn't even feature in normal videos because it's just once I've got to the top of the hill I drive around the corner and go back down the hill but this thing just trying to get out of this little section was an absolute nightmare it was like probably one of the most frustrating parts of making doing the or getting the footage for the video yesterday and today 
I really don't like how it behaves in this little section. It just doesn't feel like it's got enough grip, weight, or guts. I mean, look at it. It's like, I can't... It's, like, it's not going well. That rock in front of me is pretty loose, so it wasn't like I was wedging against it. It was just... Yeah. I haven't got the grip or the guts to really pull the tray. And again, as like the uh, custom mud's definitely won on the third quarry hill. Up here, I'd call them about even. The chain, I wouldn't say, did any better really here. I was trying to winch from the back of the truck to the trees, just one not to try and tip the trailer, but as well, like I said, if I reverse with this Zix, it, the trailer kind of stays planted, and I kind of seesaw around the uh, the dolly axle, like there. It's like the, truck, uh, the trailer isn't moving back, I'm swinging out to the side. And there again, right, I've just been trying to reverse and turn I've ended up even wider on the corner because of how the trailer makes my truck react when I reverse into it. And then in the end, like, I cut forward another minute or two there, but yeah, eventually I still couldn't get out of there, the trailer jackknife or whatever, and I lost the cargo. But then you see now, and this is now with an empty trailer. And again, like, I'm not hating on the truck, I like the truck, but... Like, yeah, Tatras are famously beasts in real life, and this version they've given us in the game isn't really a beast. It's not bad, but... Yeah, I believe we've got a lot of trucks that behave as well in many ways, and like I said, we had those trucks a year ago when the maps were more even and balanced. Like, now the maps have took a good few steps up, Again, I don't really want to say in difficulty, more in trollishness and slowness and all the rest of it, but yeah, the Tatra hasn't took a few steps up from stuff like the Dolphin, Bruce, the Bandit, uh, Dan, John, all that kind of stuff. I was just messing around a little bit. Gotta enjoy a little bit of loaf time every now and then. I'll see him. Can he make the triple? Of course he can. It's a goddamn horse. Get yourself a loaf. That is what I learned again tonight. Um, yeah, cutting across the ice here with the custom muds, same thing like I drove in the ice. Got It'll start creeping forward a bit now. Uh, yesterday when I dropped into the ice, I dropped like pretty much in straight away to where it was flush with my front bumper. You can see now I'm obviously just sat on a bit of ice first. It's keeping me a little bit more raised out, but after jiggling around for 10, 20 seconds, I sat flush with the ice and I got stuck in there. So again, not better, not worse than the uh, chained. Here though, with the death snow, uh, I'm outside the Erskal River garage, it's like when you, you know, go to out the garage, just reverse straight away, kind of knock a few bin things out of the way, and then going down here, it's extremely slow, I still think it's got the edge on the chain, definitely, through this bit, death snow, but I was flinging winches out yesterday, and where I was there, if I flung a winch out, I believe I would have gone even quicker, so... Yeah, these still definitely win over the chain in this section, but not to any major advantage, if that makes sense, because like I said, I would have been quicker with a winch, regardless of the tyres. But this is now the uh, the rock test at Ersko, which I think is a pretty good one, because there's some pretty meaty rocks. And yesterday, this absolutely flew through here with the chain, and as you can see, it's struggling a lot more today, and it's because, again, the chains bite onto the rocks better so they claw over them. I mean it's almost like to explain it in this game imagine a drag tyre that's just a pure slick tyre versus an off-road tyre that's got like big knobbly muds on it. Every tyre in this game kind of acts like a completely smooth sphere like a smooth tyre except the chains. The chains are modelled where they're like a smooth tyre with loads of chained notches all over it so, yeah, they climbed over those rocks way better yesterday with the chain. So, again, that's another negative. So, I believe so far, there was like six negatives to using the muds over the chain, but two positives. So, it did do better on the quarry hill, but it didn't do better on the uh, the snowy hill. So, what you gain in, I believe the quarry hill is dirt, someone, someone was saying the other week. Yeah, what you gain in dirt grip, you lose in snow grip. And then obviously also, um, with the custom muds going up icy hills. So, again, you it clearly had a, like, clearly worked better on the uh, the quarry hill. 
but it didn't work as well on the snowy hill and now this icy hill. And in these newer maps, I appreciate it's technically a Season 2 Phase 5 truck that we've kind of got early, but at the minute, these are my latest maps. They're all snowy maps, there is a lot of icy hills and snowy hills. There's more of them than there are dirt hills, so if I was on Quarry, I would fit the muds. If I was on, yeah, these later maps, Phase 4, I'd probably consider fitting the uh, the chained. Price-wise, I mean, it's 254 grand. John there is like, is it about 138 or something? So 120 odd grand cheaper. Even that Zix is about 20 grand cheaper. And that can have more add-ons, like that can have like a crane on the back. Uh, yeah, fuel add-on. Uh, well, the, they can both have sideboards, but yeah, it's got more add-ons. Uh, Bruce, again, is that about 138 grand or something? So it's about 120 grand cheaper than the, uh, the Tatra. And I'd say all of these are like ballpark the same. I would, to be honest, I would say Bruce is a bit better. There's certainly things it does that are better, and it's got more add-ons. Uh, the Bandit, again, that's, was it about 150 grand? So over 100 grand cheaper. The Dan is about 80 grand cheaper. The Dolphin is 119 grand. I could get two Dolphins and a half upgraded loaf for the cost of the uh, Tatra, which again, if it's more ex if it's twice as expensive as a Dolphin, I'd at least hope it's like 1.5 times better. Um, diffs wise, uh, all wheel drive, switchable and switchable. John always on, always on. Zix always on. Azov always on. Bandit always on. Dan always on. Dolphin always on. So out of all those vehicles, it's the only one that has switchable diffs and you have to go into low range to equip the diffs. Everything else has got them always on, which I find just generally to be an advantage in this game. Um, seismic vibrator module. This can't have it. John can have it. Uh, the Zix can have it. Bruce can have it. The Bandit can have it. Dan can't have it. And the Dolphin can have it. So sort of Dan and the Tatra kind of lose that little one. Which is just a, in, say, like a versatility test, like different things it can do. Yeah, one area though this does do very well is fuel. It's got a 380 litre fuel tank, which is very good anyway. Like that's the high end of like a lot of the trucks. Uh, and it's also got the roof rack. John's got 350 though. This has got 380 and it's got a bigger roof rack. So I'd say this is the winner of like this one. And it can also actually have a fuel add-on on the back as well if you really wanted to sort of get technical. Um, the Azov was like three. Uh, sorry, Bruce was about three fifty. I believe they were three fifty. There's um, the Dolphins two hundred. That's overall. I'd say the loses that one. But I was going to say the Bandit only has one fifty unless you had the roof rack on. But then that slows it down and makes it a bit more tippy. And uh, yeah, tyre-wise, this has got 50-inch mud tyres, or it can have the chained. That's 47-inch on John. They're a little bit small. That's one of the reasons they're not as keen. This, though, has got 61-inch tyres, but it is only the muds. Um, 50, 51, and it's got the custom sort of Tager muds, which are quite like them. Uh, that's 51-inch, and that's 50-inch. So they're all kind of ballpark the same. John's kind of loses by 3 inches on 3 to 4 inches. Uh, the Zix, though, wins by 10 or 11 inches. Like, the 61-inch muds are pretty handy. And, um, yeah, that's basically... I'll just show you quickly as well with the, uh, sort of the roof rack situation. This one's got 600 repair points and 200 fuel. Whereas this one's got, uh, 450 repair points, so 150 less, and 160 fuel, so 40 less fuel. So it's not the end of the world. Again, it, overall, it's still very good. It's one of the few trucks that can have a roof rack. Like, this video is not to try and roast the truck. It's a good truck, but it's just, yeah, a year on. Like, it's still not better than anything we've already got. And if you have to sort of pay for it separately and extra, then that's another thing to factor in. It's a bit like the Brigadier and that. It's sort of, you don't need it because we've got a lot of trucks that do what the Brigadier can do. Um, so yeah, that would just kind of be my overall point I'm sort of making about this truck. Like, obviously I've bought it, I've got a couple of them, I will be driving it because I like the variety. It's a good enough truck to get some missions done, all the rest of it, but I don't need it when I've got the Zix, Bruce, Dan, the Bandit, Dolphin, etc. Like, I have plenty of trucks that already cater to what this thing can do, and a lot of these I would say overall do better. Like, I do prefer the high range uh, in the Dolphin and a couple of the others. Um, yeah, the others are weighted better. I would say this is probably loses like 
Oh uh, no, I, uh, probably the Bandit. I wouldn't say is weighted very good either. Um, but yeah, that's like I said, it's a very good truck. It's just if it had more weight to it, it'd help. It naturally assist its own grip. And uh, somebody did say though, it's supposed to be getting more unique attachments in season five, like phase five or whatever. So that's pretty cool. Like again, we'll see when they get here. They're obviously not at the minute. This is just to show you, like the frame on the Bandit clearly sits a lot higher, yet. The Bandit right now has got the saddle low on, whereas this can only have the saddle high. Clearly a saddle low could and should be available. Somebody said there's like a winch drum and that's the reason why blah blah blah. Uh, long story short, it's kind of an invalid argument because when you put the saddle high on, the winch drum thing appears to disappear. Um, yeah, also with various trucks like the Dan and so on, it steps the saddle low back on the chassis more so it could put it just behind that drum winch thing. Um, yeah, even... Uh, the Bandit can also have the saddle high and it's still raised up on like little spaces that make it go higher So overall, it's just it sits a lot higher the trailers on the Bandit over this. Uh, that's the Dolphin versus it. The Dolphin's got the saddle low And it sits a little bit higher than the Tatra. So again, there's no reason why you couldn't put a saddle low on the Tatra Like it's not gonna make the trailer be awkward and weird. Uh, that's Dan. Dan's got the saddle low on and again you can see it's stepped it back compared to where it puts the saddle high so it could just step it back on the Tatra as well. And again uh, Dan probably uh, maybe sits about an inch higher. It's got an inch bigger tyres so there wasn't a lot in it. And that's the thing I was saying like basically the reason one of the reasons I did ended up using the chain in yesterday's video um, oh yeah, just to show you quickly, they're, they're obviously both limited to saddle high, but you can see the size of the tyre difference is quite a lot, and the chassis of the Zix does actually sit a lot higher, that I can kind of understand if they put a saddle low on the Zix, it'd almost have to sit like it flush with the chassis. I still think it's doable, that it'd just make the saddle low trailers sit at a bit of an angle, but I don't really care. But yeah, like... The chain is the main thing that differentiates it from the Zix. If you put the custom muds on, use the Zix. The nose clearance is a little bit better. Like I said, the tyres are a lot bigger. The weight is better. The um, fuel is the same, but the roof rack and the repair points and everything on the Zix is better. The Zix, well, in fact, funnily enough, I didn't even realise, but there, there's a Zix behind me that's got a crane on it. It can have a crane. It can have a fuel add-on, uh, the sideboard, the flatbed, uh, the seismic vibrator. Uh, I believe a van repair body so yeah it like it can have more it's just an overall better equipped one which seems to be the way they generally do it with like the DLC vehicles ever since the Khan Marshall there seems to be like the backlash from that because some people who didn't own it to be fair thought it was OP um, so they've kind of always erred on the side of caution as far as it goes, and yeah, I mean, literally, if with the same tyres, the Zix is objectively better, and I'm not being harsh against the truck, like, it's not my opinion, it's factually better, it's, yeah, got more add-ons, it's got more weight, which helps, etc., and it's not really hindered in any way because of that, like, it's pretty bloody good at not tipping, so is this, to be fair, the Tatra, but I'm just saying, it's like, there's, I can't think of anything that the Zix does worse, the turning, I would say, is better on the Zix as well. So yeah, it's like it's the chain that it has that was kind of the thing that would draw it for me because as I've shown you like doing it tonight with the custom muds, there was six negatives and two positives. So obviously you've got to bear that in mind. As I said, if I had to go and do some missions on Quarry with the Tatra, I would take the uh, custom muds. But on all these new maps, I'll probably be using the chain more often or I'll just use the Zix. But yeah, like I say, that's just my opinion, but I just wanted to show... I don't just randomly come up with an opinion, like I go out and test it and that's how like I enter it in an unbiased situation and it sort of, I form it based off what I see. But yeah, that's about it for today though, I hope you enjoyed, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, thanks for my Patreon members, get yourself a loaf because you're still a goddamn professional, and I'll be back soon.